Jesus is up on a high mountain with three of his followers and all of a sudden his clothes become white, whiter than it's possible to get clothes. And two people appear with him, Moses and Elijah. But why these two people? Well, Moses was significant in bringing the law to God's people and Elijah was significant as one of the prophets. Uh, these two are representing then everything that has come before Jesus and that is now being fulfilled in him. The three followers of Jesus are in a state of shock as Peter suggests, well, how's about we set up three tents that we can camp out here for a while? He is quite scared with what's going on after all. But then a voice speaks from heaven. God speaks and says, this is my son who I love. Uh, the same words that were spoken at his baptism from heaven. But now the father adds, listen to him. And with that, these dramatic events come to a close. Coming down the mountain, Jesus asks his followers not to say anything until after he has risen from the dead. Uh, this confuses them a little, but they then ask him a theological question. Why do people say that Elijah must come first? And Jesus confirms this is what the prophets say. But actually, Elijah has come first, not literally, but one has come in the spirit of Elijah. That is, John, uh, who baptized people, he has come and they have done to him everything that was foretold in the prophets. He has gone the way of suffering and death, the way that Jesus himself would go. This all gives Jesus an opportunity to reconfirm his mission to his disciples, that just as has happened to John the baptizer, uh, as was foretold by the prophets, it's all come true according to God's plan, so that would happen to him. It would not be defeat, but it would all happen according to God's plans. Jesus would die, but he would also come back to life again.